Come on, y'all can do better than that. That's why our heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah, because the Lord loved us so much. Because he loved us first. In return, we can love him. On this 2020 Christmas season and Christmas sermon, I ask that you would focus your attention to the book of John. Very familiar book. Many of you don't even have to pull your Bibles out for this one. John 3.16. Blood did not reveal. John 3.16. And it simply says, For God so loved the world. He didn't love a group. He didn't love a denomination. He didn't love a race. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever yeah, will believe in him shall, should not perish or shall not perish but have an everlasting life. For a few minutes topic God's the greatest Christmas giver that's it God's the greatest Christmas giver y'all gonna help me I'm gonna work those three greatest in a few minutes as you know, on this Friday, we will be celebrating another Christmas season. Parents will be relieved after they have spent all the money that they can spend. Big Mama going to be happy that she no longer have to cook after preparing that Christmas meal. Kids are going to go to bed on Christmas Eve anxious and excited to wake up just to snatch up the wrapping paper off their presents. Christmas time, y'all. Yeah, it's a great time. Christmas time is a time of giving. It's a time where family and friends, they exchange gifts and they do it in the spirit of love. Christmas is a time where we as children of God reflect back and think back of that precious gift that we receive. That gift that God had gave mankind many years ago, over 2,000 years ago. And you do know that Christmas is, good God Almighty, all about Jesus, because Jesus is the reason for the season. I ain't got no problem with the man in the red suit, but let the truth be told, I got a red suit, blue suit, white suit, yellow suit, and none of it can do what Jesus can do, because Jesus gave us a gift that Santa can't never bring you and put it underneath your tree. Matter of fact, it ain't about what's underneath the tree. It's about what hung on the tree over 2,000 years ago. His name is Jesus. I'm already in the text. The text that's before us is one of the most uh, uh, quoted and uh, well-known texts of all history. It's running neck to neck. Good God Almighty. Yeah, with Psalms 23. Yeah. <laughs> But it's the greatest love story that you can ever read. It's a love story that, that's summed up in one little bit of verse. Yeah. That says, so, for God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. And this entire gospel comes to focus because of God's love. Good God Almighty. And God's love just wasn't for a certain group of people. Good God Almighty. God's love was offered for the whole wide world. Good God Almighty. That's a black man, a white man, a Jewish man, a Japanese man, a Hindu man. Yeah, yeah, the Jamaican man. You name it. Good God Almighty. God acclaim it. Good God. Y'all gonna work with me? God's love. It's not a love that's self-centered. God love is not a selfish love. God love don't have boundaries, you know, keeping folks out and trying to keep only certain folks in. God's love is for everybody. God's love is so strong that good God of my, his love has the power to reach out and draw you to him if you're willing to be drawn by him. Here it is in our text. I like the fact that God's action is defined by the true pattern of what true love really is. Good God Almighty, so often uh, folks have that thing twisted uh, what, what love is. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't love collard greens like I love. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a strong life. <laughs> So somebody back here say he love him, he love him. But it ain't the same love as that agape love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all I'm trying to say is there's different kinds of love. But the kind of love that God has is that agape love, that unconditional love. Different type of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What love got to do with it? It got everything to do with it. I got three spiritual nuggets. Then I'm going to get on out your way. Good God of mine. Three spiritual nuggets concerning this greatest Christmas. The three nuggets that I'm going to uh, uh, speak on this morning would be the greatest love, number one. The greatest gift, number two. And the greatest blessing, number three. Good God of mine. If you take those three greats, you can cook this sermon the way you want to cook it. By using this one little bit of verse. The greatest love, the greatest gift, and the greatest blessing. Let's start with number one, the greatest love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. It's important to realize that God's love is the greatest love that you're going to ever encounter in your life. Good God Almighty. And what makes this love so powerful is the fact that he had unconditional love even when folks was hating on him. Oh, y'all ain't working with me. Y'all ain't, ain't talking to me. Oh, they, re they rejected the, the prophets. They rejected God being their king. They, they rejected his, his rules and regulations. But yet, in spite of all that, God still loved them. Oh, it's easy. Man, it's easy to love somebody that's already loving you. Come on now, y'all. Y'all better talk to me. It ain't hard to love somebody that's already showing you love. It ain't hard to love somebody that's already befriend you. It ain't, it ain't hard to love someone that's already kind to you. But the question is... Can you love someone that has rejected you? Can you love someone that got the ill feelings towards you? Can you love someone that's trying to ruin you? Can you love someone that's trying to overthrow you? Can you love someone who's trying to steal your job and to good God Almighty get in the way of, get, of your next promotion and yet you still gonna show them love when you show up on a job every day? That's the kind of agape love you got to have. You got to love in spite of and not because of. Oh, y'all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to love good God of mine in, in spite of and not because of. Because the truth of the matter, we have all fallen short in some form or fashion. And when you start looking at all the, all the shortcomings in a person's life, it, good God of mine, if you put that folk front, then you won't show them love. But if you think about how good God still loves you, knowing that you just messed up yesterday, you just messed up last week, you just had a hiccup last month. Good God, all of a sudden, your perspective changed. So in spite of, 
not because of. In spite of all that we have done to him as mankind, in spite of all the meanness that we have, good God Almighty, launched out at God about, good God Almighty, in spite of our sinful natures, in spite of our spiritual unattractiveness, he still shows us what's called unconditional love. Good God Almighty, how precious it is to know that God's love is unending. Good God Almighty. I'm so glad that his love don't just run out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 1159. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember the good God Almighty Cinderella story? She had to get on back before, before, the, before the clock struck 12. Good God Almighty. I'm so glad that God's love don't run out at the end of 2020. That his love will keep on rolling in 21. It'll keep on rolling in 22. It'll keep on rolling forever and ever. His love is everlasting to everlasting. His love never changes. See, one thing about folk, folk love change. Because folks are fickle. They are change on you. As long as you're meeting their needs, give them what they want, cater to what they want to do, oh, they'll love you all day. But as soon, good God Almighty, as you start telling them a little truth that goes against. See, a lot of times when folks want to hear your advice, they don't really want to hear your advice. They, they want you to agree what they already got. I ain't going to stand with that mess you're talking about. And all of a sudden, when I start sharing the truth out of love, you get mad and you go sideways on me. And you start talking sideways and you start looking at me sideways. But how many of you know, good God Almighty, when you got true love, even when your kids act the fool, you still love them. Even when your husband and wife act the fool, you still love them. You got to have that agape love that don't come from the the world. Good God, they got to come from on high. God has that, that love that will not change. Well, we looked at the greatest love, but now let's look at the greatest gift. It's right in your text. Sometimes the text will teach itself, and you just got to underline it. And you just sit there and you think about, how can I work and think about that. So the greatest love. God so loved the world. Now let's look at the greatest gift. How do I find the greatest gift? It's right in your text. It says, and he gave his only begotten son. Good God Almighty. That begotten is the unique, uh, a unique son. A special son. Good God Almighty, she didn't lay down. Good God Almighty, and, and bumping ground with a good God Almighty, her fiance at the time. No, but she was overshadowed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, God, and John goes on to tell us in our text that God so loved the world that he gave his son, his only begotten son. And I need to tell you, good God Almighty, the greatest gift a person could ever give you or that you can ever receive. It ain't found in no diamond ring. It ain't found, good God of mine, in a bundle of weeds so you can get your hair shook and look good. It ain't found in that dress in those stiletto heels. It ain't found, good God, in some good smell of perfume. Now, we, yeah, we want you to smell good, but it ain't found in that. Brothers, it ain't found in a new pair of Jordans. It ain't found in a big screen TV. It ain't found in a new car in the, in, in the garage. But the greatest gift is found in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is a gift that keep on giving. It's a gift that has no expiration date to it. Ho, 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 ho. That same fresh love that he gave you when you first got saved, that fresh love is still right there. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, God's love, good God Almighty, it's a supreme gift in giving. Good God Almighty. He gave himself, good God Almighty, by bringing his only begotten son to this world. He gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice for sinners like you and I. Good God Almighty. He gave his son as a payment for our sin debt. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank God for good credit. 
Thank God for money in the bank. Good God of money. Thank God for money in your pocketbooks and wallet. But some things money just can't buy. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Good God of money. He's the gift that keep on giving. He shows us love by his giving. Our thought. I was taught as a little boy. That when somebody gives you something. You ought to always say thank you. That's the least you can do is say thank you. We so worried and concerned about what we're going to get from dealers that we ain't even pause to say thank you, Lord. But good God of mine, coming to his own mean world and good God of mine, died for my sins. I'm so glad that he came. So you ought to tell the Lord thank you. Can you tell the Lord thank you? Good God of mine. Yeah. And the way that you can also tell them thank you, not only by lip service, but also by your lifestyle of living. Yeah, live a life that's acceptable and pleasing in his sight. Not, not, not in man's sight, but in God's sight. Paul said it this way in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. He says, and God commanded his love towards us. Good God of my, yet while we were sinners. Then Christ died for us. Ain't you glad, good God Almighty, of the Lord, he loves us in spite of, yeah, not because of. So now, we've looked at the greatest giver. We've looked at the greatest gift that came from the greatest gift, you know, the giver who gave. And now let's look at the greatest blessing. It's found still right found in that same text. It's still in the text. Look what it says. Yeah, it, 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 the greatest blessing is that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that's a blessing that keep on giving right there. That Christ's death for us would bring us unspeakable, immeasurable blessing. And it guarantees us, good God of mine, that we'll have a safe place on the other side if we trust him even now while yet we are alive. We will not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. And just in case there's someone here who has not accepted the greatest gift from the greatest giver, I need to give you some biblical instructions from Reverend Doctor, Preacher, Brother, Apostle Paul, good God Almighty, that's found in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9. That says that if y'all shall confess with thy mouth, yeah, 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 uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, yeah, he shall be saved. Good God Almighty, and the reason why it is, is because we believe. Good God Almighty, he's already done the work. All he wants you to do is to believe. We have eternal life, good God Almighty, because we believe of what he did. God's love, y'all, is like an ocean that has no shore. Yeah, God's love is like a mountain that has no summit. God's love is like a country that has no boundaries. God's love is like a river that has no bank. God's love, good God Almighty, has the depth with no bottom. Good God Almighty, can I really tell you what God's love all about? God loves you so much that in the book of Genesis, he good God Almighty, he was in the beginning before the beginning even started. In the book of Exodus, he was our Passover lamb. In the book of Leviticus, he was our high priest. In the book of Numbers, good God Almighty, he's the one that got lifted up. In the book of Deuteronomy, he is our deliverer. In the book of Joshua, he is our battle axe. In first, in first Samuel and Second Samuel, he is our king. Good God of mine. In Chronicles, he is our king of kings. In Israel, and good God of mine, uh, uh, Nehemiah, yeah, he is. In Esther, he is our uh, restorer, our restorator. Good God of mine. In the book of Job, he is our redeemer. For my redeemer, Leah. In the book of Psalms, he's that all in all. In Proverbs. Ecclesiastics and Songs of Solomon. He is our wisdom that you need every day. In Isaiah, good God of God, he's that promised Messiah. In Jeremiah, the, uh, the lamentation, he is the bomb of Gideon. In Ezekiel, he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. In Daniel, 
he's my fire keeper. Good God Almighty. And Nahum, good God Almighty. Uh, uh, Habakkuk and Zephaniah. He is our stronghold in a time of trouble. Good God Almighty. In the book of Malachi, he's the son of righteousness. I'm talking about a Matthew King. I'm talking about a more suffering servant. I'm talking about Luke, uh, a great uh, physician. I'm talking about uh, John. When the word became flesh and dwelt among men. I'm talking about the acts when good God Almighty, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Good God Almighty, when you look at the book of Paul, he tells us all about how to live. Then when you look at all the other general letters, it tells us you got to keep your faith even in the midst of the storm that you in. And then in the book of Revelation, he's the one that come back for the church without spots. He's the one that's going to come back for the church without blemishes. Good God about it. Any of good God. What are you doing? Say yeah. Say yeah. Ah, yeah. He's a savior that was born in a manger with the purpose to come here to walk this earth for 33 years and die so we can have right. Good God about it. He couldn't die until he first was born. I'm so glad that he was born. And I'm so glad every year around Christmas we celebrate him. But you ain't got to wait for Christmas to celebrate Jesus. I'm going to celebrate him every day of my life because he's been so good to me. Good God Almighty, he's been so good to me. That died on Calvary. That was put in a barn man too. But the story don't stop there because good God Almighty, right up Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Power to make you walk right. Power to make you talk right. Healing power. Saving power. Delivering power. Any kind of power you need, you can find it in Christ Jesus. Say yeah! Say yeah! John 3.16 Greatest love, the greatest gift, and the greatest blessing. It's all wrapped up in that one of us. I remember even as a child going to Sunday school over at New Pleasant Grove. That was one of the basic songs we heard. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. He never required you to be a theologian to get saved. He never required you to be an educator. He never required you to be smart. He never required you to know every verse in the Bible. He simply wanted you to believe and trust in him. And then he's the one that deposit into your life. Yeah. Week after week. Yeah. Month after month. Yeah. Friends that you thought was really your friends, they start falling by the wayside. Yeah. All of a sudden, you got a new palate. That your taste buds have changed. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see. Yeah. That the Lord is good. Yeah. And I don't know what your Christmas is going to look like on this Friday morning. But I know on this Sunday morning, you can celebrate Christmas even now. Because Christmas is all about Christ. And you can't have Christmas without Jesus. Christ in the midst, how you get Christmas. And I'm so glad that Christ is in our midst. Because he said in his word, wherever two or three are gathered, in his name, that he shall be in the midst. And so we just want to tell the Lord we love him. Love you. As the choir kick us back off. Christmas gift. 
give to yourself right there. Is this the word?
His name is Yeshua. The strong God that walked with us, Emmanuel. For God is with us. Many times we thank folks for to be with us. And when you look back, there ain't nowhere to be found. But I know I know a man that the Bible says he's sticking closer than a brother. That he'll never leave you nor forsake you. His name is Emmanuel. For God is with you. Thank you. So thank you, Master, for being my special Christmas gift that continue to give every year, every day, every moment. If you don't thank God and gave anything, I dare you to hold your breath for, for an hour. And you let me know how that turned out now. Just, yeah, you ain't got to give them an hour. Just How precious those gifts that God give us. Life is short. You're here today. And you can be gone tomorrow. So once again, to our Facebook viewers and our YouTube viewers, thank you for hanging out with us. Just know the very next opportunity that you get freed up. Come on back and hang out with us again, whether it's virtue by, by what you're doing sitting at home or when the time is permitted hey, throw on your mask get your temperature checked get some hand sanitizer and, and properly uh, be safe distant throughout the church and come and worship with us until next time, God bless you, God keep you that is our prayers, amen